Hey folks, how's it going? So today we're going to be going through this problem called the kth largest element in an array. So we are given an integer array nums and integer k, so we need to return the kth largest element in the array. So how we can think about this problem essentially is that when we're given this array of, of integers and we're given this k, so what this k means is that it's like we need to return the kth largest uh, element within this array. So in this case, k is 2, so which means that we need to return the second largest element within this uh, array. So the second largest element is going to be 5. So because of the first largest element is 6. So this is going to be 1, this is going to be 2. That's why here the answer is 5. So you can imagine that if k was equal to 3, then we were going to return 4, because 4 is the third largest element within this array. So given that, how can we then solve this? Maybe someone can say the brute force, like coming up with the brute force solution, like right, we did not we did not put too much effort into the solution. It's more like a naive way um, solution. So uh, one can say, okay, the first thing that we can do is that we can essentially uh, iterate through um, the array, right? Iterate through the array, then pop then pop the largest element, right? So the idea here is that when we pop the largest element, we want to get to K, right? So uh, just to make an example, so uh, given this um, array, which is three, two, one, five, uh, six, and four, so the first iteration, what we're gonna do is that we're going to pop six because the six is the largest element, right? Then we decrement our k by one, so it was at two, so which means that it's going to be two minus one, then it's going to be one. We go again, um, we iterate again, this time the largest element will be five because we pop six, so we, we pop five. After we pop five, we subtract our k by one again, so we find out that, okay, k now is equal to zero, so which means that five is the value that we are looking for, right? So that's like one way we can solve this problem. But the term complexity of doing it this way is going to be um, k by n because of what you're doing is that you're going to be looping through the array and you have to like find the largest element, which is going to be uh, an n operation, right? But you have to do that k time because of you have to find the k. So this is not a very efficient solution. So one can say that, oh, the better solution probably is to sort the array, then we go all the way to k, right? And this can also work. It's actually uh, not a bad solution because what, what, you, what we can do is that if we're given this array, we can probably sort it. It's going to be 1, 2, 3, uh, 4, uh, 5, and 6. So now that it's sorted and k is going to be equal to 2, we can start from the... Uh, last element and we go all the way to k. So this is going to be 1, 2, then we return this 5. So this is, can also be one possible solution that we can solve this. So the term complexity of sort um, is going to be n log n. So this solution might not be uh, uh, accepted in an interview given that this is a medium um, so uh, a medium solution they need it's a medium problem so obviously there's gonna be they're gonna need a more um more better better complexity so to speak so one can say okay now that this complexity is not good uh maybe we can do a heap right we can use a heap algorithm so the idea with the heap algorithm is that we can reduce this time complexity to um k log n this is because of a heap is more like a tree data structure. So what will happen is that um, we're going to be, when we pop, when we pop the largest element, we're going to pop that at the expense of log n uh, operation. So because of now we have to pop k time, so it's going to be much more efficient than um, n log n because we don't have to sort the entire array all the time. So that's why uh, heap might be better in this case. But surprisingly, there's even a much better solution that we can use to solve this problem, which is going to be what are we going to be uh, going through now, which is going to be quick select. 
So the quick select algorithm uh, allows us to have the term complexity of linear, so O of n, on average though, uh, which is much better than the heap algorithm. But I have to say that uh, in the worst case scenario, this term complexity also can be n squared. So I'll show you how it can be n squared. But anyway, how does this algorithm work and why do we have to learn this algorithm? So how you can think about it at the high level is that you can think about it as like we're trying to shrink our search, right? We're trying to shrink our search. So you can think of like uh, we have what we call a partition. So the purpose of the partition is to bring all the elements that are less than the partition on the left and all the elements that are greater than the partition on the right. A partition can be any number that you want it to be, but we're going to we usually select the last element. So in this case, it's going to be four. So this is going to be our partition, right? Then what we do is that we have what we also call pivot. So this is a pointer that we just going to move because if it has to swap these elements. I'll show you how it does that. But the punchline here is that the first thing that you're going to do is that you're going to ask yourself this question. Is the pivot right? This value here, three, is it less than four? Yes, it is. So that means it's going to be uh, here. Then you ask yourself again, you move this pivot, you bring it here. Is the pivot, which is two, is it less than four? Yes, it is. Then you move it here. Then you ask again, is the pivot here, one, it is less than four? Yes, it is. Then now pivot will move here to five. Is like five less than four? No, it is not right so pivot has to stop has to stop there it does not move anymore it stops there then the iterator will continue is six less than four no it is not so this is where we come into an end of the array we are here so what we need to do is that we need to swap this partition with the last pivot so we're going to swap these two so five will be swapped five will be there and then four will be here so this element will be here so but can you see the punchline is that can you see what we just did all the elements that are less than this partition are this side all the elements that are greater than this partition are this side so now what does this mean what does this tell us it tells us that essentially we can determine if this pivot this p is it is it whether it equals to k or it is greater than k so that we can shrink our search so we know that the k we have been told that the k is equals to two we ask ourselves this question is p uh equals to k uh what is it it's going to be n minus k right if it is equals to that then um that means that this is the correct fail right that, that that means that yes this is what we're looking for but in this case it will not be because of the length of this array is going to be what it is six so six minus uh two this is going to give us four so if we start here zero one two three four so we we're supposed to be here so we are not there we are currently at this four here we're pointing to this uh four so we are not at the correct uh index but what does this tell us? It tells us that we need to look here because four is here. We need to look here. So we don't need this thing here. We don't need these guys here because of four. What we're looking for is the side. So, right. So what we're going to do is that we're going to do the same thing. Now our search is going to be this side. So our search is going to be uh, six and five. So we do the same thing. Now we're going to say that, okay, five. Now you're part you're the partition, right? And six, you're going to be the pivot. We ask the same question. Six, are you less than five? Say no, right? So what will happen is that then we're going to come to five, right? Which is going to be the pivot. So this is like the last element. So the next operation is just to swap these because of like this is the next, this is like the last thing that we do, right? So which means that five will come here, six will be there. But guess what? Five, where are you sitting now? You're sitting at position four. And you, you are where the P is. P didn't move, right? So you're where the P is. And when we check, we said that we need four, right? So now, which means that five is the correct value. So, and this matches what we have here. So that's how this algorithm essentially works. So five is going to be this 
right? So you, you will be able to understand like the conditions like deep, trust me when you see the code, but it will make sense. But at the high level, I have to be honest with you, this is how it works. Like this is like, you, you, obviously like you might be surprised, why do we have four here? Isn't like the, the, the length of this array isn't like zero one? No. No, 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 it's not like that. We, we just like, we don't like, remove. when I said remove this, we don't like remove them. We just like play with like pointers only. So these, these, these things will be pointers. We were gonna call them left and right. So you will see them in the code. We do not necessarily remove, we just like shrink through the pointers. So just for example, you can imagine like you have an array, like one, two, three, uh, four, five, right? And then like, um, the, the current we're looking at this like two and three right so we, we don't have to like remove them like remove them like we just like looking at this here okay so that's what i i, I meant um we, we're not focusing on this it's not like we, we, we remove them in in a, in a sense uh sorry for for the confusion uh if that but you will get it you look you will understand it in the in the code i think in a much more better way but anyway i want to I want to explain the, the quadratic potion, right? Some of you might be like, but how do, how does this thing become quadratic? So imagine if, um, let's make an example. So imagine if like uh, we had six here and we had five here and we had four here, right? So K, let's imagine that K is equal to three in this case. What is our process? We say that we select the partition, right? So imagine this is our partition, this is our pivot. We, we spoke about this, right? And we said that we check each if element is less than the partition. In this case, all of these elements are less than the partition. So what does this tell us? They will never change, they will never be swapped. They will be the same, right? So they will be the same because of all of them are less than the partition, right? So then what are we gonna do? The, the, the last step is that we, we, we have to then do the same thing is like do we have to look this side or do we have to look this side then in this case we know that we have to look this side because of this is where the k element is going to be so which means that we have to remove six right we do the same thing now five become our partition then the pivot becomes here we do the same thing right then we after that we go have, we're going to have to remove five right so but the punchline that i'm trying to say to you is that you can see that this thing is becoming quadratic because at each element yes at each element you have to do this uh of n operation whereby you have to check right so you have to check so what does this tell you it tells you that if we can uh, equally balance our array that's the way we're going to get this quadratic so but if we can get a partition that can equally balance that can equally uh, balance the array like on the side then that will work fine but in this case you can tell that this did not balance well because of you see like there was one element so it did not balance well but that's why you're gonna get the quadratic um in the worst case but this happens in the worst case but on average like it's gonna be linear so this is the solution that we're gonna code i uh, hope that made sense guys so now we're going to be trying to solve this problem using the explanation that we went through uh, on like blackboard so the first thing we're going to do is that we're going to define k which is going to be the length of nums uh, this is going to be minus k then we're going to define the recursive function quick select um, this is going to take our left and our right pointer um, just to define this, like when we start, these are going to be, um, just going to say return to make sure I'm in line. This is going to be, when we start, this is going to be zero and the length of the array. So this is going to be zero and the length of nums, uh, we're using zero based uh, indexing. So it's going to be minus one. So uh, like I explained to them, we're going to have the pivot. Uh, which is going to be nums, the last element, which is going to be R. And we're going to have also the partition, which is going to be um, pointing at L, the first element, right? So we just need to look through uh, the, the, the array or the, 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 the space that we currently have, which is going to be L to R. So it's going to be R in uh, range, uh, L and R. 
and what we do is that we ask if like we ask the same question that we did in blackboard is nums i right uh, is nums i less than equals to the pivot so the pivot is it equals to the pivot if it is then we're just gonna swap this too so it's gonna be nums uh p it's gonna be equals to I think it's going to be nums i so we're swapping the value that is currently currently pointing at p with the value that is currently pointing at the i index so we just need to make sure that we increment p so this is just the sort so in python sort not sort swap is quite easy so you can do it in one liner so it's going to be nums equals to nums uh, p so just to iterate what this code is doing so like i said that we have an array so what you're going to do is that the pivot is going to be that last value, last element that i told you about then as you iterate you check each element if it is less than that pivot so if it is less then you just like shift your, the p the partition you just shift it right that's what you do but if it is not then you just leave it uh, i hope you still remember my explanation uh, Anyway, when we are done, the last step that we, we said that we're going to do is that we're going to swap where the P is, like right? um, is P, then this is going to be nums R. So we're swapping the P with the last element. That's what we're doing here. So it's going to be R, uh, then this is going to be nums uh, P, right? So that's that. What do we also need to take into consideration? is those conditions that i spoke about so we know that um when p is it equals to k then we're gonna return like that value but if it is not like let's assume that p it is greater than uh, k um in this case we have to shrink the search right so uh, our p we have to say we have to shrink the right side so it's going to be p minus one so you can think of here it's going to be quick select uh select and it's going to be l and p minus one those who like do like a lot of binary search probably will understand this much easier uh anyway uh if p it is actually less than k then we shrink our search so this is going to be return uh but this side we shrinking uh, what is it we sh we're shrinking our left side so it's going to be p instead of minus going to be plus one then r won't change so else that means that this is equal to and we're going to have to return nums um which is going to be p okay um i think this is it to this um let's see if i made a silly mistake let me just try to see uh okay i made a mistake um so i think it's indentations oh okay let's give it a try i think i i have another indentation problem because of this here quick select okay all right run yeah, we're always gonna get bugs. Let's see. Oh, it worked. So that's it, guys. This will do it. Uh, thank you very much for tuning in. I'll see you guys in the next one.